Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So it is the one year anniversary already of the SJM case, and we have no final answer still, and no access to the CCTV footage that we have been fervently asking for. And this is the day, April 25th, when SJM and his friend entered the Pumpohan River Park and SJM did not make it out there alive and his friend did and then the mystery ensued. We still do not have an answer from the prosecutors. It's still wrapped up in the courts and apparently there is a hearing this month and it may be delayed until June. So SJM's father in his latest blog post at the beginning of April said that he had met with the powers that be, there's some information that he presented to them, he wasn't able to share with us all of the details of what their discussions had been, but it looks like he's waiting for some sort of decision in June. And what it looks like really is a settling of the waves of, first of all, the decision being delayed to April to see how the March presidential election went, and then being delayed until June to see how the shuffling probably in the prosecution's office had been going. And then right now we're having a lot of political battles over how much power the prosecution is actually going to end up with in this new presidential administration. Remember, the police has, have, have basically said that there's nothing more to see here and there's no way that we're going to release the CCTV footage that would basically tell us all we need to know of what happened that night. Basically, the CCTV footage that brings us a closer, more accurate, clearer angle, the CCTV cameras that come from the bridge that direct their cameras onto the riverbank instead of us remember like going from the tunnel and going zooming in like thousands of pers thousands of x's to try to like see how the shadows are moving and then interpreting the shadows that then become clearer as people were moving in and out of the tunnel and that plaza area so we see the price that we have to pay as a country, when the police can be corrupt, where they're not going to release the CCTV, and then we also see how we have to pay when the prosecution is corrupt, when they're not going to work on behalf of the people. So again, why does Korea want to give all of its eggs in either basket when it's going to be corrupt? That is not a smart way to manage the way that your justice system is going to work. Now, compare that in stark contrast to what is going on and what is drowning out the news cycle and drowning out any possibility for us to have any kind of coverage to pay homage to the one year anniversary of this Hun Jung Min case. The new psycho Riverside killer case that has just come out involving a girl named Yi Eun Hye. And look at this. We even have a name of the potential killer. We have her face plastered everywhere in star contrast to SJM suspect. And we have all of the criminal profilers that were on the SJM case now being carted out in front of everybody in the country to basically plead the case and show how guilty this girl is. Well, she does look really, really, really guilty. And yes, we are going to start a whole series on her to piece together this really complex, really intriguing, but really spine chilling story of how this girl, well, now she's in her early 30s, but how this girl is being accused of killing her husband three and a half hours before his $800,000 life insurance policy expired. And yes, it was also involving a river where her husband 
did drown. And it also involves Hot Daddy's show on SBS, except in this case, she actually went recently in the past year to Hot Daddy and said like, look, I'm being unfairly treated by my insurance company because the insurance company is not paying out this $800,000. Actually, it was multiple insurance companies that all added up to about $800,000. But all these insurance companies are being like, you know, this girl looks super sus and she has had a history of super sus insurance claims that we think were fraud actually looking back on it and they're they haven't been paying out and so she went to hot daddy's show and said like look you need to plead my case to make it look like everything was above board this was an innocent accident and i deserve my money so she actually went because she probably looked at the sjm case and said oh river okay sus okay, they basically worked with the sus person and in their favor, but what is the stark difference? The absolute stark difference. She comes from a very poor family with disabled parents. She was a runaway teenager who started to become an escort when she was start uh, at the age of 15. She also most likely does not have any kind of leverage and she probably didn't have any kind of networks and not was not in that system where most likely in the other case the wheels had already been greased so now the same profilers that had been all like prematurely in the sjm case remember how they were all like prematurely basically pleading the case that there was no criminal activities or connection with SJM's friend well they are now just basically roasting her and saying that she is super guilty and everything and all the evidence points to that why? Because already we have so much evidence. Even though her river was not the Han River, her river was like two hours east of Seoul in like a more camping area. We have like CCTV footage released that is like tracking their every move. We didn't have the CCTV in the SJM case when we have like probably like a hundred times more CCTVs because that's in the heart of Seoul. And we have all of the forensic evidence already from her phone and the phone of her accomplices, chat messages, even down to telegram messages, which is supposedly supposed to be like not traceable, and video footage, all of that from her phone, where we basically couldn't even get the phone of SJM's friend and after we did it was a super sus situation where it looked like it was probably faked and we have her phone already stark differences so rich versus not rich totally different does she deserve everything that's coming to her oh yes because she looks super sus super psycho super crazy super scary you would not want to mm -mm, do not want to cross paths with her but it does bring up the point that there is a tale of two justice systems here in korea very 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 unfortunate and before we get into her case i just wanted to take today to remember SJM on his one year anniversary of his passing because we do have to remember that the case has not been solved and I would actually like for all of us to remember that he has not left our hearts and we should still keep fighting for the truth and that at least for me I still feel like this is something that we cannot ignore this is a grave injustice and this is an important piece in our history right now for civil society if we let this go we will be in danger 
for our lives if we do not resolve this correctly. And so before we paper over everything with this new Riverside Psycho Killer, we have to remember we did not resolve the original one from last year. All right, guys, what do you think? And are you looking forward to the new story? And how do you feel about the SJM case one year? one year afterwards with still no final answer. Leave your comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.